Concerned about disc bulging in the neck and back? Come learn about the symptoms and treatment. When we discuss the spine in a clinical setting or in, with patients that are having problems with their spine, one very obvious thing that comes up is something called spinal discs. And spinal discs tend to be a very strong discussion in the healthcare arena with patients that are experiencing any kind of spinal problem. To understand the issues that can occur with spinal discs, you have to kind of first understand really what they are. Spinal discs are structures that sit between each and every vertebra, and they act as either a shock absorber between the two bones, and they also act like a spacer. And the discs have two main parts. They have this inner gel that's kind of soft to help kind of have the disc have uh, fluid, fluidity and mobility within the spine. But they also have something called a, a nucleus, which is a tough and durable fiber, like a, like a BB almost sized thing in the center. And that gives it a pivot point. And these inner vertebral discs, what they provide mostly is cushioning between the vertebra, like I mentioned, and it also provides a friction-free environment, which prevents these spinal bones from actually degenerating over time. The spinal discs also really help facilitate flexibility and movement within the spine, meaning as discs become injured or become deteriorated, they can really limit flexibility and movement. They provide the spine with its basic structure. They actually help facilitate the normal natural curvatures of the spine and also help facilitate the spine being straight from the, sp from the front. And also they act as shock absorbers, meaning as your body accepts, your spine accepts gravitational forces, it can help absorb and disperse those forces. What happens with spinal discs is they can begin to bulge or something herniate. And when bulging discs occur, what it means is that the annulus has actually moved out of position and it's caused the spine or, the, or the, to cause the gel of the disc to bulge to one side or the other. And this can lead to compression of the space between these vertebras. And this, what goes through these vertebras are actually the spinal nerves and spinal cord. So it can start leading to neurological symptoms and problems. This can occur in any spinal section, meaning the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, or lumbar. Bulging discs can occur in the neck. They can, what you call it, mean a cervical spine di uh, bulging disc. It can happen in the lumbar spine, which can be a lumbar spine bulging disc. Those are the two most common areas. You tend not to see bulging discs too often in the thoracic spine because the discs are actually a little thinner in the thoracic area. When we look at bulging discs, we look at uh, several different main causes. One main thing is something called disc desiccation. Disc desiccation is as the spine um, loses its ability to move and as the patients begin to age or when the spine is shifted out of alignment and it doesn't move properly, what happens is the disc loses the um, fluid level within the gel-like surface and it causes the disc to actually get a little thinner. And as they get thinner, it can start bulging out on the side more likely to one area or the other depending on the position of the vertebra. And this change of shape can cause it to bulge or even herniate. Disc degeneration is also a very common reason why we see bulging discs. Now this happens as patients tend to get older and unfortunately a lot of patients think that, oh, it's normal and natural for discs to degenerate. It's actually not, it's not a normal and natural process. It happens commonly because most patients don't maintain or take care of their spine, but they're normally related to normally traumatic injuries that have happened many lo a long time ago or a re lifestyle like repetitive trauma. And the most common repetitive trauma that we deal with these days is long periods of sitting. This lack of mobility or lack of movement in the spine and long periods of sitting will cause these discs to become desiccated and they start to degenerate. And this degeneration leads to these, these discs bulging and can unfortunately affecting the nerves that exit the spine and lead to neurological symptoms. Another thing is obviously spinal injury or trauma, things like car accidents, slips and falls, fractures, sports injuries, those kinds of things can lead to sudden impacts and sudden impacts can cause the spine to shift and cause discs to bulge. But this is by far the not the most common cause of spinal or of disc bulging. The most common cause is just repetitive trauma over time. The most common symptoms of disc bulging is typically pain. You're gonna have pain in the area of, of the bulge. Cervical pain, back pain, low back pain. It can lead to muscle spasms, because the reason why it can lead to muscle spasms is because when you affect the neurology, it can start affecting the way the muscles are functioning. And of course, once the spine shifts out of alignment, which is almost always occurring at the exact same time that there's a bulge happening, the muscles are contracting, trying to help realign or pr protect that area from going further out of alignment. 
Weakness and numbness is also a very common issue because if the disc bulge and they compress on those nerves, they can cause numbness into either your legs or into your arms or into your hands. You can see tingling, you can see muscle atrophy or weakness, not the ability to, to like some patients say, they have a hard time holding a, a heavy glass of water, like they can't squeeze that water because the bulge disc is affecting the nerves going into the arm and hand. It can affect the way you physically walk with coordination and gait obviously because it can affect the nerve system, but it can also affect the way the lumbar spine physically moves. And when you affect the way the lumbar spine moves, it affects the way the pelvic, pelvic girdle actually articulates during gait. So it can affect um, gait, it can affect motion within the neck, it can cause limited range of motion within the cervical spine, lumbar spine and gait. Another common word is something called sciatica. It can cause something that we call sciatica. Now sciatica is when they only affect the nerves that create the sciatic nerve, and therefore it can cause symptoms symptoms on the back of the leg, the back of the calf, and into the foot. And it can lead either pain or numbness or weakness down that nerve path. And that is labeled sciatica, but it's because of compression to the nerve tissue exiting the spine very often as a result of bulging discs that are being bulged because the spine has shifted out of its normal alignment. In the lumbar spine, it also can affect the nerves that affect the bladder and bowel. So it can, in severe cases, it can cause bladder and bowel problems, which are obviously unfortunate. And it tends to be more often as patients age and they get older and there's severe degeneration. So if you have bulging discs, how do you actually treat the problem. The first thing is that we have to underline what the cause is. And the majority of the time when we look at the causes of a bulging disc, it's normally directly related to the area of the spine being misaligned. It's not common to have a bulging disc with normal spinal alignment. Normal, you see abnormal spinal alignment first, and the disc is responding to the alignment of the spine. The best way I like to explain it, it's kind of like an ice cream sandwich. Like if you've got an ice cream sandwich, you have ice cream in the middle and you have two hard cookies above and below. Well, in this case, the hard cookies are the vertebra and the ice cream is the disc. Well, if you get those cookies and you were to shift them out of alignment, it would make perfect sense that the, the ice cream will bulge away from the, the compression. And that's what ends up happening is these discs tend to bulge. Well, you can see, unless you realign those vertebra, it's hard to get that disc to come back into alignment. So a lot of times patients are treated as the symptoms of the bulge disc. I mean, they treat their pain, they treat what they're feeling, but this misalignment stays so the disc actually never unbulges or gets better. And as a result of their symptoms tend to continue and tend to worsen over time. And this is where structural approaches, things like chiropractic care, exercise, therapy, traction, rehabilitation, can have a great effect on realigning the vertebra to help remove the actual causation of what's leading to the bulging disc to allow the body to actually heal and function better. Once you realign the vertebra, you can't just, now you must stabilize it. Stabilizing it is a very important process when it comes to rehabilitating the spine, because if we just move the spine but we don't stabilize it, it can lead, it, it can lead for instability and for the problem to continue to come back. So we recommend, number one, is that if you know you have a bulging disc, is to evaluate the spine, to look for any type of abnormal alignment and see how that can be realigned and then treat the disc properly so the body can begin to heal and begin to function. If you want to prevent degenerated disc, uh, prevent uh, disc herniations or disc bulging from occurring, number one thing is, is good ergonomics, making sure that you have proper ergonomics and your daily lifestyle to prevent the spine from shifting out of alignment due to repetitive trauma, which prevents this disc degeneration and age-related disc degeneration from actually occurring. No matter what, we want you to be proactive. We want you to preserve your spinal function, preserve, preserve your spinal position. That is the most important way of preventing disc degeneration deterioration, disc herniation, and of course, disc bulging. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.